What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a video on eight common training misconceptions. Just a little disclaimer, so for these training misconceptions, I'm mainly going to be talking about hypertrophy here. So if you have other goals from lifting, like general health or sports specific development, this may not fully apply to you, but if you're just here to get swole, then keep watching. So I think one of the most common ones would be the concept of no pain, no gain. There's more fatigue, there's more soreness that does not equate to more growth. You can get tired doing senseless exercises without anything being effective in a muscle building sense. If you're doing a bunch of high intensity interval supersets, giant sets, or if you come in trying to make yourself puke or trying to make yourself not be able to walk after a leg day, that is most likely holding you back. I'm not telling you to take it easy in the gym, but I do think in a lot of cases, when I see people working out, I feel like they could be making more progress with a more moderate approach. The second one here would be thinking that light weights are for cutting and heavy weights are for bulking. I'm sure you've heard that a lot. But you know what, just to rebunk an already debunked myth, the only times I think this statement is really valid is if, number one, you're reducing the loads deeper into a cut to reduce injury risk and excessive fatigue. And number two is that if you're using heavier loads when your calories are high, when you're in a huge surplus, and you can focus on training performance and strength. For just about every other situation, I do think you would make gains safely in the 5 to 20 rep range, maybe even the 3 to 30 rep range if you know how to program and train. For example, you wouldn't be doing 3 to 5 reps on a lateral raise and you most likely would not be doing 20 to 30 reps on deadlifts. But there are definitely some exercises that benefit more from being done in the lower rep ranges and some from the higher rep ranges. The next common one I've seen here is that people often think that if you're not getting a pump, you are not growing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think pumps are not what you would consider a main driver of hypertrophy. And as far as I know, this is especially true in drug-free athletes. Pumps are influenced by a lot of things such as your sodium intake or hydration, carb intake for the day or maybe even the day before, novelty of your exercises, and your rep ranges. So they won't always be there. I think by falling into this trap, you do end up compensating with novelty or new exercises or throwing in weird exercises that create a fresh pump. But I feel like that takes away from your progressive overload so I really wouldn't recommend obsessing over it. Now, if you're deep into a cut, you might not even feel any more bumps. I'm sure a lot of competitors have experienced this, but of course, that does not mean that your training is not working. You can get a pump with very little effort. You might be able to just, you know, curl some very light dumbbells for a few reps and you get a pump. Or for me, if I just pulled my lats in like this, yeah, it's cramping up already. Basically just flexing whatever muscle group you're trying to work. It's not so hard to get a pump. What is sort of more difficult is being able to progress on the same exercise week after week. Now, another thing people tend to get confused with would be thinking that you need to follow a specific training split to succeed. So stuff like bro splits, uh, push-pull legs for advanced lifters, upper lower full body for beginners you know what i mean but i really don't think that's the case uh, if you train each muscle group at least once or twice a week with adequate volume sufficient intensity manageable exercise selection then i think you'd be good to go so train in a way that aligns with your goals and balances the stimulus with the fatigue. There really are no set rules in setting up your training, as long as there is a sound rationale. Now, I am currently running a five-day full body split that was structured from my previous push-pull legs upper lower split. And for the past few years, I've actually been experimenting a lot 
with the training split and I honestly don't think one split would be inherently better than the other. The fifth uh, common training misconception here would be thinking that you must deadlift and squat for bigger legs. So in the context of building muscle, you probably don't need to do that. <laughs> Uh, deadlifts don't train your legs as much as most people think they do. Like, when have you actually failed a deadlift because your hamstrings gave in first? Squats, although decent at hitting your quads when done right, are also heavily limited by your core, your cardiovascular endurance, and a bunch of other things. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be part of your program, but if your leg days focus almost exclusively on powerlifting style squats and deadlifts, you're probably missing out on some gains. Now, in relation to this, I think it's also quite common for people to think that multi-joint free weight movements are enough to grow every muscle group. Some say you'll just need to do barbell rows for bigger biceps or bench for a complete chest for huge triceps and for cap delts or maybe even squatting and deadlifting for more defined abs, but that is probably not gonna cut it. I think I've learned this the hard way, spending my early years sort of skipping out on more direct upper body work, and I've spent the past two to three years trying to let my upper body catch up to my legs. If you want a muscle to grow, and you want it to grow a lot, you will need to train it directly. That doesn't mean you need to train everything in isolation, you can alter or modify an exercise to better target a specific muscle group. Again, in the context of hypertrophy, there's absolutely nothing wrong with going with, say, uh, an RDL over a conventional deadlift or a sort of converging machine press instead of a barbell bench press or a Smith machine squat over a barbell squat. The seventh one, which I've seen a lot of people do, not sure why might just be because they're following their ego but they're following advanced bodybuilding programs that you find online so the first reason why i do not agree with this is that i really do believe that context is key and that individualization is super underrated following just any advanced lifters programs won't get you to the same place another thing is that you yes you maybe me and a lot of other people are probably not actually advanced lifters so we shouldn't be obsessing about using an advanced program there really isn't much of a difference between how beginners and advanced lifters should be training other than maybe the loads which have already increased over time now this last one might be a little bit similar to the first yung no pain no gain this one would be the idea that doing more is better. So I just want you to remember that forcing yourself into seven training days a week, which you can't recover from and you can't really show up to, will burn you out in a few weeks. Doing 10 sets of squats and seeing significantly worse form after every set, that is neither safe nor smart and it's probably not going to be effective in the long run. Now, if you've got eight exercises targeting a single muscle group in a single day, I don't think they'll make that muscle group any better. Especially if you've built up so much fatigue, you end up half-assing and sandbagging the rest of the session. So just remember that more is not always better. It actually rarely is, and that you should never sacrifice quality for quantity. I'm sure there's more than that, so if you have something to say, just leave it in the comments. But I will definitely have to make a part 2 or maybe a part 3 if you count one of the videos I've already posted some months back. But I hope you found this helpful and if you did, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.